Hi there, welcome to this course. In this course, you will learn everything about role level security with Power BI. That means what is role level security, what are the different kinds of role level security, how you can apply them and how you can use them in your day to day life while working with Power BI. But before going further, let's see what will you learn from this course. In the very first episode, that means in this episode, you will learn about role level security. What is it and what is its process? What are the considerations? What is user name versus user principal name, etc. Everything you would learn in this episode one. In the episode two, you would learn about the static role level security and its configuration in Power BI. In episode three, you would learn dynamic role level security with Power BI. In the next episode, you would learn dynamic role level security with manager level access in Power BI. In episode 5, we would learn about dynamic role level security with profiles and users in Power BI. In episode 6, you would learn about dynamic role level security with organizational hierarchy in Power BI. That means if you are working in an organization and there is a hierarchy, then how you can implement the role level security using Power BI. In episode 7, you would learn about dynamic role level security with organizational hierarchy and multiple positions in Power BI. In episode 8, we are going to calculate some of the measures like total and percentages in role level security. And at last, in episode 9, we are going to apply the role level security with the live connection, for example, while using SSA Stabler model. So you would learn from A to Z everything regarding role level security in Power BI in this course. So this is the very first episode of this course. And now we are going to learn about what is role level security. Well, Role level security, also known as RLS, with Power BI can be used to restrict data access for given users. For example, in your organization, you want to restrict data for certain users. Or it can also be possible that you would like to restrict the data based on the locations. So that you can do with the help of RLS. Filters restrict data access at the role level. And you can define filters within roles. In the Power BI service, Members of workspace have access to datasets in the workspace. RLS doesn't restrict this data access. However, there is a caveat and we are going to learn about this later on in this episode. You can configure RLS for data models imported into Power BI with Power BI Desktop. You can also configure RLS on dataset that are using direct query, such as SQL Server. For analysis service or Azure analysis service live connections, you configure role level security in the model. In the last episode, we are going to configure RLS for analysis services such as Tableau model. For that, we have to configure that RLS in the model itself, not in the Power BI desktop. The security option will not show up for live connection data sets. That's why we have to create roles in the model itself. Now question comes where to start? Well, you have to follow certain process. And for that, the very first you have to define roles and rules in Power BI Desktop. Then you have to validate the roles within the Power BI Desktop. After that, you have to manage the security on your model. And at step four, you have to work with the members. That means you have to add the members into the RLS roles that you have created. And at last, we are going to validate the roles within the Power BI service. So these are the five steps that you need to follow whenever you are going to implement the role level security into your Power BI reports. Now, this is very important for you to get to know what is the difference between the username or user principal name DAX function. Whenever we are going to implement this RLS, we are going to either use username or user principal name. But in my experience, I'll always suggest you to use user principal name rather than username. There's a reason for that. And the reason is very simple. Within Power BI Desktop, username will return a user in the format of domain slash user. For example, ABC is your company name, so ABC slash your name. And user principal name will return a user in the format of user at the rate contoso.com or you can say your company name.com something like that. 
So basically your email address that is given in your company that is related to your account has been returned only with the help of user principal name. Within the Power BI service, username and user principal name will both return the user's user principal name, that is UPN. This looks similar to an email address. So my advice is always use the user principal name, otherwise you may encounter many challenges while implementing the role level security. Using RLS with workspaces in Power BI Well, if you are working with Power BI, then you should know that there are classic workspace experience as well as the new workspace experience. In the classic workspace experience, there are the certain limitations as you can see on the screenshot over here. However, if you publish your Power BI desktop report to a new workspace experience in the Power BI service, the RLS roles are applied to members who are assigned to the viewer role in the workspace. Even if viewers are given build permissions to the dataset, RLS still applies. However, if you are a member, contributor or an admin, then RLS doesn't apply over there. Now there are certain considerations and limitations as well. So please always follow these while you are implementing your RLS into your Power BI reports. The very first is if you have previously defined roles and rules in the Power BI service, you must recreate them in the Power BI desktop. Secondly, you can define RLS only on the dataset created within the Power BI desktop. If you want to enable RLS for datasets created within Excel, you must convert your files into Power BI Desktop or .pbx files first. Thirdly, service principles cannot be added to an RLS roles. If you are using any service principal account, you cannot use them into the RLS. Accordingly, RLS won't be applied for apps using a service principal as the final effective identity. Number fourth, only import and direct query connections are supported. For live connections, you have to create roles in the models itself or live connections to analysis services are handled in the on-premise model. And lastly, the test is role or view as role feature doesn't work for direct query models with single sign-on enabled. In the next episode, we are going to learn about static role level security and its configuration in Power BI. Stay tuned for the next video and thank you so much for watching this video.